So we are four people who founded this company. Uh, Paul Doe uh, is, I call him the blue genius. He's the formulator of the product. Uh, I'm a long-suffering consumer package-based person, work for Campbell Soup and a bunch of other companies uh, in the U.S. and Canada. And, as, uh, and so we all got together a while ago, uh, another person from Kraft and then another uh, person that actually came out of nursing. So we founded the company four years ago, and the question that we asked ourselves was really simple. Um, we said, you know, we've been in this business, long-suffering food people, for over 25 years. You know, we keep taking all these bad things out, trans fats, gluten, we take gluten out, we take everything out. What if we just made a product that actually uh, was as, as clean as it could be in terms of the, the uh, ingredients? But we just didn't add bad stuff to it and just left all the good stuff in. I know it sounds like a novel concept in 2016, but that's what we did. And, and we've ended up with literally two global patents on our products. We'll explain that in a minute. And, um, and we're in about 11,000 points of distribution across North America. We started in 2012. And uh, it's been a fun run. Uh, to say it's easy is an understatement. I came out of the world of uh, being able to uh, you know, have people help me with things, and I answer my own phone now, which is a lot of fun. Uh, if there was a day in my life when somebody else could do that for me. So it's been, uh, it's been humbling, it's been a great experience. And I will say, just at the outset, there is no way we could have done nearly what we did without the help of uh, AIP, the Agri Innovation Program, uh, GF2, LFF, uh, and, uh, and the good folks from INAC who have helped us through that. Uh, there's just no way we could have done it. So thanks uh, in advance. And let me just jump in. So I'm just going to make sure I've got the advance right. Oh, okay. Maybe not. Run right away. We're working on it. Yeah, that's my fault. Which, which, where do I? Okay. It lit up now, so I think I understand it. Okay, so you, you can't start any presentation without saying this is a, a far sight. So while I'd recommend either the chicken fried steak or the maybe the seafood platter, but look, I gotta be honest with you, nothing we serve is exactly what I call food for the gods. So we live in a we live in a food world that has come out of we live in a food world that's come out of post-1945, the food industrial complex. So the reality of that, I'm a former economist, and I will tell you that yeah, food is a big industry, obviously one of the largest in the world. And the issue is technology is driving the future, and food is struggling to keep up with it. And I defend big food, and I'm going to defend big food even though we're little food. Uh, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, so why has food been left behind? So I was an officer at Campbell Soup Company. Let me explain. So if you have a business that the innovation that you had came out in, in 1898 called condensed soup and you had margins, excess of 50% margins and you had a 90% muscle penetration. What's the incentive for you to change your business model? Now, I've done this talk to lots of people, dietitians and nutritionists, but I tell them up front, I need to lose 30 pounds so I'm not eating those things. Um, but I will tell you, how many of you have ever sold a house? Hands in the air. So if you were closing on a house, and a week before you were closing on the house, you, your, your roof uh, sprung a leak, you had a choice. The choice was this. You could either patch the roof for $500 or change the entire roof out for $6,000. How many of you would patch the roof? Okay. I've had that, this conversation all over North America. Not one person has put their hands up saying, I put a new roof on. So that's the dilemma we're in in the food industry. So there's nothing going to incent the big companies in food to change. And I don't blame them. I actually defend them. Because if you're running a business that, that, that that's good, it's, gonna, it's going to keep throwing off cash and you're going to make money. So it's a good day. So the balance sheet of all these companies they just they're not incentive. So then people like us, the, the previous and uh, the previous uh, presenter and all the presenters probably today, they we're incented to change the world of food, and that's what we're working to do. So big food, 
Uh, as I said, uh, profit and taste uh, become a big part of what it does. Profit is first, and big food, taste is second. How do you get profit and taste? Well, what you do is you use low cost sugar, oil, and sodium, right? You lose those things, and when you use those things, you can make a lot of money out of it. So we're all addicted to those three things. Every one of us in this room, now I know there's people in here that will tell me afterwards, there's no way I'm a very good eater, and you probably are, but as we've grown up in the last 50 years, that's the reality of life. Um, so what does 85% and 8 mean to you? 85% of the entire world's food sales comes from eight companies. So if you actually believe that there's not sort of a, you know, kind of a little society there of those eight companies, you're mistaken. So little guys like us can make a big difference in the world, but what do we have to do? We have to have the consumers in the world actually buy our product, right? Because the consumers will ultimately be the choice maker of who, who and what company they're going to buy from. So uh, obesity has been at an all-time high. So here's the, what's happened after 50 years. Obesity, all-time high. Hypertension, all-time high. Heart disease, all-time high. So I would tell you that as much as cigarettes were the problem the last 50 years, probably food will be the problem in the next 50 years. If you talk to anyone in the healthcare profession, it's a real it's a real issue relative to all those things. And our costs are going to keep going up. So companies like ours are excited about the opportunity. So the economic reality, we did a focus group in Atlanta, Georgia with this company, gave women, middle class, making enough money, five apples for a two-pound bag of Doritos chips. Uh, we said, hey, you need to feed these two children, which one are you going to feed? They all wanted to feed apples, but they all needed to get six snacks out of them, uh, or six or eight snacks out of them for the week, so they all picked Doritos chips. So, and here's the irony, they cost the same. Five apples, two dollars in Atlanta, Georgia. The two pound bag of Doritos chips were two dollars. So, you can see the dilemma we're in, so we've got to change that cycle. So then it, it leaves us. So we started this company, we said, what are we going to do? How are we going to build this thing? And so what we did was we started with this. Um, our brand is really aspirational. It's really about now is your moment. Um, you have to think about the world in today. You can't kind of think about it 20 years out or 20 years past. So that's what we work to do. Our consumer promise, so every single one of our products that we have, uh, have these attributes. So we have a global patent. We start with 10 pounds of raw ingredients. We work through it through a patent process down to one pound of finished product without losing any of the nutrients or micronutrients. So that allows us to actually create a nutrient-dense food. So we didn't stop there. We said, how do we create competitive advantage? Well, we then said, which is why Paul is a food genius, we'll put no additives or preservatives in it. So putting no additives or preservatives in it is really hard. Without, you know, when you put those in, it's easy to make a product work. So we also make it not free gluten-free, non-GMO, and then we've got this food activated absorption with our vitamins. And so that's really the promise that we're giving all our consumers. Um, on, the, on the other side, it's in terms of a social mission, <coughs> excuse me, I'm fighting a cold. Um, we, what we decided to do was for every package that we sell in every community across North America, we're gonna feed one other privileged, unnourished person in that community uh, through the food banks, one of our products. So we've done that, we've fed over two million people across North America to date in about 24 months of shipping. And so our goal is to feed 88 million over the next 10 years. And so we don't talk a lot about that because frankly, um, it's not the only reason we do it, but it's one of the reasons. And I think as we continue to build, uh, you know, there'll be other companies, and there's lots of companies that do this now, but we believe it's a pretty important part of doing business across North America. So this is our products. So on the left are muffins. We actually sell muffins right across Canada and in the US. Uh, it, we've got vitamins and we've got healthy candy and so our, our healthy snack. And so we sell all these through about 11,000 points of distribution. Now what you might say, which is an appropriate uh, observation, are you guys schizophrenic because you're in about a bunch of these different categories. What we're trying to do is make sure that we lead in nutrient dense foods. So as we continue to move in our business, what we will end up doing is we'll talk about how all these are related. Um, we, uh, our overall sales, 92% of our sales are out of the US. 
8% in Canada. We're already developed in Canada, even though we're a Canadian company. Um, so that's sort of that's sort of the insight in the business. Uh, these are just a couple of quotes. So the quote was, uh, and we love, and one of the things that I do as an ex-consumer marketer is we love unsolicited uh, emails and testimonials from our consumers. So these are just a couple of them, I'll read it. I just wanted to tell you how much my family of four enjoy your vitamin chews. We never get enough fruits and veggies, so we take, we take your UV Lemon Smart Healthy Chews. Um, next one, I have been taking for about 10 days, taking the shoes for about 10 days, and I noticed a difference in energy. I also like that it's all natural. Uh, the muffins, I recently purchased your orange cinnamon uh, mango muffins. I love what your company stands for when it's made, uh, and that it's made in Canada. So we like hearing that, that it's made, you know, people, we've got a lot of people really responding to that. Uh, and it's rare, to, it's rare that I get passionate about a product, but, but if I do, it's because I believe in it. I've been buying your car muffins for about a year now. I'm a flight attendant. My job's very difficult uh, at times find, to find healthy options. My colleagues are always asking about the muffins. It's easy to spread the word. Uh, then the snacks. I bought a package of pocket treats at the yoga conference, and I just love them. The representative said that I could buy them at Walmart, but I'm going to decline because we go on a stock at Walmart a fair bit. Uh, which department are they in? And then the last one, hello, please uh, put them in your mailing list. I'd like to try new offers you may have. I tried your pocket treats, they were awesome. So that's really what drives us is that consumer being able to take our product, live a better lifestyle. And um, our next, uh, our next, we've been in business for about three and a half years. We're really excited about the next three and a half years. And again, uh, appreciate the support of uh, those I mentioned earlier. And uh, that's it. Thanks.